MTV. What's up? Yo, it's yo. the weekend mixtape, 102.7 Kiss FM, the new music show with DJ Ski oh. is on every single Sunday night, but he's in London. And so Swag. I'm hanging out. I'm Julie Pilot. Profit, what up, y'all? It's so crazy. Like, our whole station's in London right now. Ryan Seacrest, Sissony. I want to be in London. I'm DJ upset. DJ Ski. Shout out to Sadeo. So we're holding down the fort today. And uh, I think the coolest girl I know is our guest today, CeCe Sheffield. Swag, most definitely. That girl is in front of the camera, behind the camera, producing, DJing. I, I don't even know what she doesn't. I, I think we should talk about what she doesn't do. Maybe that would be like. You know why she's the show. coolest girl I know? Because at her live show, she has dubstep ballerinas perform. What, 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 what? You know why else she's the coolest girl I know? Because once in Venice, a crackhead broke into her house and they stole her clothes, put them on, grabbed a bottle of red wine, and then fell asleep in her bed. And when she, when the police showed up, she Instagrammed the whole thing and she's so cool. The crackhead even looked cool with her clothes on. I'm going to have to say I saw that on Instagram play by play just because that's how good she is on Instagram. But you know for real why she's the coolest girl I know? Because once I went to Umami Burger with her, and they cleared the whole place out, locked the doors, b brought a bunch of drinks to our table, and the guys at Umami Burger started dancing on the tables like Coyote Ugly. True story. This is the CC Sheffield Love Fest, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so she's going to be coming up uh, in just a minute on the weekend mixtape. We're doing the live chat on Ustream. So live. get your questions in. Uh, we've got our studio audience. And um, Prof, what has been going on with you? Um, well, I uh, had a little article in Billboard magazine. I saw that with Red One. Super epic. About I mean, his new record label? 2101 Records. And uh, obviously, I have a band, Seven Lions. We talked a little bit about that. And I thought it was going to be an interview mainly about him and what he had coming up. But we were both on the phone for the interview. And he basically just passed the interview on to me and let me speak. And that was just super big because... Billboard is like the Bible for, for music, you know what I mean? So Yeah, when okay. I was a kid, I saved my babysitting money for like a whole summer to get a subscription to Billboard to know what's up. So that's official. Anything uh, else you've heard on the music tip? Um, I mean, i kind of been uh, living and breathing that new Nas album. I think, um, I, think, I think it's important, like just in the ebbs and flows of hip-hop, that a record or an album, I should say, comes out like Nas's new album, uh, Beautiful Life. And uh, it's just... it's. Because he's such a contradiction to himself, and I think that you know hip hop in general contradicts itself. And he's one of the only artists I know that embraces that contradiction. So a record will be beautiful and ugly at the same time. He can talk about his daughter. He can talk about his divorce, and keeps it real. You know, it's not all about just popping champagne and being at the club. You know, and uh, just going crazy. I know. I love just hearing the good stories again. You know, Nas album, sick. I was in New York last week. I heard a bunch of new music that's coming out this winter from the new Christina Aguilera to the new Taylor Swift. There's new music from Kesha coming, I think, in October. And uh, one of my favorite jams also was the new Enrique Iglesias featuring Ooh. Sammy Adams. Nice. That's going to be coming in a couple new weeks, so a lot of new music. Uh, speaking of new music, another song I put on the blog is uh, Chris Cab, uh, Good Girls Don't Grow on Trees. Yeah, I heard that. Carly from the Block, she's got breaking news about where you can see Chris Cab and one of our other favorite homies Carly, from uh, the Weekend Mixtape. Hey, everyone. Everyone on the stream right now, just so you know, we're giving away tickets for our Club Splash this Friday with Jasmine Villegas, who I love. We had her in here, what, two weeks ago? Yep. Two weeks ago, and Chris Cab. so make sure to log on to Kiss to find out how you guys can win those tickets. And bring your sunscreen. Yeah, yeah. that too. San Dimas is hot. <laughs> All right, should we do it? Let's do it. Let's bring her up here, Cece Sheffield. For the Love Fest, ladies and gentlemen. So we have a seat prepared for you. We have a microphone so you can talk as well. Holler. If you guys haven't seen it, you have to see the video on the Weekend Mixtape blog, Cece's new video for Long Brown Hair. And give everybody like the full story about how it came together, the song. And uh, even how much you were behind the video. Who's the director? I want to know. I am the director. Holla. Um, so Long Brown Hair was 
we had for my first single on Ultra Records, and we had picked another single, and there was like a lot of controversy with it. So this was it was a song that I had written right in February, so it was really fresh. The emotion was right there, and so the label went with it. They picked the single, and I it's it's uh, just you know typical girl stuff. You know, Facebook makes it very possible that you can just track right there, like whoever your dating's exes are. So stalker. Stalker. So basically, you were seeing this dude, and you were crazy, crazy, crazy in love, and then you start re- realizing every single one of his I'm just like, ex-girlfriends look I'm exactly a meme. like you. I'm, I'm basically the same girl over and over and over again, and it doesn't matter if I'm that That's person. That's crazy. No, I, I mean, it's, I mean, I took artistic license. I'm like, that's not like, I have no f- bad feelings for that person. Now, what's it like, because you're a friend of mine, and it just makes me laugh to think of your vision of, okay, I uh, am signed to a record label now, I have a budget, and I'm going to direct my first video, and at the end, I'm going to... What? Would you, like, chop them up into a million pieces? You know I mean, what I mean? Okay, the video... Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. alert. So, basically, no, the video is, like, I'm, like, okay, basically, it's sort of, like, fantasy. And then also, like, from acting and stuff. Uh, True blood. <laughs> True blood. You you want to do fun things. Like, what do you want to do? I want I wanted to have, like, hot girls. I want, and I have, like, a huge, like, thing with bathtubs, like, all over the world. I'm just, like, always in the bathtub, like, riding and spacing out and so i mean i think it was just how do i translate the nightmare of the drop and so me for the video it was like storyline versus storyline versus a nightmare just like how wild can we get it was sick it was like the ring in certain parts where it's just like flashing yeah and and like this shuffling uh shoulders and those girls are like just homies of mine and it was a total homie project um you know and it's the fun thing about directing is you know at 10 a.m. I have 20 people coming to the studio to shoot this video and then you know at 6 a.m. the prop master is like we don't have a bathtub there's not and so you're it's like problem solving like on the spot like figure it out like we don't have an elephant we'll just use the dog exactly so was it easier or harder than you thought it would be um you know as an independent artist and I think my biggest advice to all independent artists is just make as much content videos as possible. Don't wait for people to be like, here's a bunch of money. So I had a lot of experience making videos. You know, my own money. One time you did that video yourself, right? The, the, the one you'd gone and got the free (laughs) archived video, like cartoons. What was that? Uh, I basically, I basically went to art Basel in Miami and I'm lucky that my girlfriend, she's a model chick. And like the the song to me was all about like having a sugar daddy and like uh, lingerie and super sexy ladies. So I love those songs. <laughs> FYI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my girl, I was like, how about you just sit there topless and eat a salad? And then and so that's not, I was thinking a parasite at first. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Julie liked that record. That's crazy. No, no, no. no but the, like that was a video that I had. I had footage of her like. We were at an Art Basel in the Mondrian Hotel in Miami, and then I had intercut it with uh, free footage of like 1950s stag film stripper. The the one the video she's talking about is free like downloadable footage, and it was like an Indian kind of psychedelic like Yogi Bear or some crazy. No. no, no, it was like Indian dancers, and it was oh, all. Oh, I do animated. remember. I did see that. I do remember that. So those are like free things that you can do. There you go. I love, and you know, you were saying the best advice you have for independent artists. I think you probably have a lot of advice for independent artists because you've had such a crazy journey along the way. So many people think that if they're writing songs or making music, they should just be on the radio right now. But you kind of went from DJing and getting a publishing deal, and there were a lot of steps in between. Explain how all that happened. Okay, so my journey started, I was really into poetry as a teenager and um like that's not a very popular thing but then i kind of and i loved music so then when i finally found a guitar player that i loved it was like a total gift it was like oh my god i can write songs learn how to write songs started a rock band started playing steve aoki's cinespace back in the day when it was all indie rock shout out to sunset strip music festival and then um 
And so I had my rock band. Someone came, saw it, a publishing deal. And I was like, I didn't even know what publishing was. And that's where you get people represent you as a songwriter. So then my band never got a record deal, you know? So my dream never stopped. I just started working with different producers and improved my craft of songwriting and songwriting yeah. and songwriting and songwriting. And then, you know, I had even like, I was like, maybe I'm just not going to be an artist. And then, you know, the Tiesto thing happened and he featured me. Then I wrote with... Um, that great song, Escape Me. We'll put that you. on the blog. Yes. And then um, I wrote Raise Your Weapons with uh, Sunny Skrillex. And then that went on Dead Mouse's record and that got nominated for a Grammy. Huge. <laughs> I like I like you're the, my hype man. Over I'm like here. the ad libs. I do the ad libs. <laughs> Cross my Grande. Hype man. Grande. Um, and then you know now I got my chance to be an artist, and so it's like all the things that I learned coming up, I'm still learning. I can't wait to like get it even on a bigger level, and so. Okay, I'm gonna get real Oprah with you here. If you were to talk to like the 16 year old version from your se- of yourself, and know that like. All along the way, people are going to tell you, you need to be this person, you need to be that person, you need to do something else. What advice? Because I know along the way, people have said, don't do what's XYZ. naturally to you. You know, I want you to do what Pink's doing. I want mm-hmm. you to do what MIA's doing. I want you to do what Kelly Clarkson's mm-hmm. doing. What advice would you give to her? I would say, don't worry about the hype, worry about the work. The work is writing performing, booking shows, like all the business meetings of this guy's going to do this for you, this guy's going to do this for you, waiting for this label or this manager to come through. You know what? All those people will come to you when you have something that is developed in a very full way. That's great. Yeah, it's like my grandma would always say, proof is in the pudding. Exactly. Also known as, I love that though, for real, don't believe in the hype, believe in the work. It's it's hard work, people. It's not it's not easy. And um, keep with your day job. Well, it's paying yes. off because we were getting tweets like crazy. Hit up on Facebook. I know uh, your people at Supra were sending lots of shout outs. And we've got some questions on the live stream with Carly right now. Um, well, I enjoyed it very much. I got to make out with people. and um, It's very strange because those scenes are very short. It took, it took two all day. days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it says here you tapped into being an artist. Now you're designing shoes. Do you like to do more? I'm not really... I, I don't get ahead of myself. Do you want to show not, off the shoes really quick? Yes. I didn't design these. These are all black diamonds too, right? <laughs> I don't know if you can all see that black, list. everything. I didn't design these shoes. Uh, this is, I think, Amor is the Amor is the designer of the shoe. This is a, a collaboration she did with Supra. I'm not designing the shoes. They're the homies. Uh, I'm just keeping it real. Skater chick for life. Are you guys ready to see it live? Yeah, 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 right. yeah let's do it. CC Sheffield, ladies and gentlemen, oh CC Sheffield. Holla. Okay, this is the first time I've ever done the acoustic version of Long Brown Hair, so I'm just gonna be really concentrated and do it. She looks a lot like me With long brown hair She got long legs too What's up with you? Are you profiling The same old girl? Could you ever understand? I saw the girls You had before They look a lot like me 
did. Uh, thanks so much uh, yeah. for hanging out. You almost weekend. got punk rock at the end right there. I like that. So where can uh, people see you next? Any uh, DJ gigs? Any performances lined up? Um, <laughs> I am going to NYC Fashion Week, and I am expected to probably DJ with some designers, runway show kind of DJ. Tough life right there. You know, I like to keep it classy. Holla. And then uh, next time you're doing something in LA, we'll tweet it out, put it on the weekend mixtape for everybody because I'm really excited about all your new stuff coming with Ultra. Congratulations. Thank you so much, you guys. You've been really big supporters. Big cheerleaders over Since here. Since day uno. Thank you so much. And uh, next week, coming up on uh, the new music show and weekend mixtape, Becky G is coming through. Becky G. So uh, Becky make G. sure to hang out every single Wednesday, 3.30. Prof. Prof in the house. You already know.